Welcome everyone in our first video to help you get started in Tony Stewart's All-American Racing. So this is the follow-up to Tony Stewart's Sprint Car Racing that was released earlier in 2020. This time around we've got a different roster of tracks, different roster of cars, and hopefully quite a bit of fun to be had. But before we can do any of that, we need to take care of some things first. And in today's video, we're going to talk about setting up your steering wheel. The first thing we need to do is come to the bottom left hand corner of the screen and our options menu. So we'll select that. Then we're going to see some tabs across the top of the screen. Uh, the one we're focused on right now is player one controls and you're met with two different options. I know a lot of you play with the gamepad, but for today we're going to be choosing the steering wheel so that I can set up my Logitech G920. As soon as I select that option, the first thing we have to decide is the degrees of rotation. Now by default, uh, you'll need to know what your steering wheel degrees of rotation is. Mine is 900 degrees, so it defaults exactly what I need. Now let's take a look at some of the individual options inside. On the right hand side of the screen, you'll notice the default button mappings using everything that I need on the Xbox controller, which in this case is my Logitech G920 wheel. If you're not happy with some of the, map some of the mappings and you happen to be on a PC, simply scroll over to the input mapping tab and here you can change around everything to fit your liking but for me the default mappings on the wheel and pedal set work just fine now let's move under the settings tab and start from top to bottom and work our way through some of the basic setup of the wheel the good news is if your wheel and pedal set are fully functional and relatively new and good working order you may not have to make many if any setting changes at all so that's the good news, but the purpose of today's video is to show you what some of these options do just in case you need to adjust a few things. First things first, ship type is the paddle shifting or a stick shift. Now for me, I'll be using the paddle shifters and I will not be using the clutch pedal in the game. So I'm going to leave this to off. Although if you choose to use the clutch pedal with your stick shift, then you certainly can do so. Force feedback by default, it is somewhere around this level, about two thirds to three quarters of the way up. I prefer uh, a stronger force feedback in the wheel and the G920 doesn't have terribly strong force feedback anyway uh, for my standards. So I choose to max this completely out. But those of you who might prefer a little bit lighter feel out of the wheel or have a completely different type of wheel, feel free to adjust this all the way to the left means uh, the minimum effect strength and all the way to the right means maximum effect strength. I'm going to leave impact effects on. That would be when you hit the wall, hit another car, things like that. I'm going to leave that on. And then we get to the dead zones. The dead zones are definitely an area you should not have to mess around with if your wheel and pedal set are in good working order. However, if you're having some potentiometer issues with any of your pedals or if your steering wheel is maybe a little bit worn out and not tracking exactly the way it needs to, you might need to adjust this and add just a little bit of dead zone. For example, the wheel and pedal set I had before the Logitech G920, after a while the pedals started to wear out a little bit, so I had to add in just a little bit of brake. Now, not sure why they spelled brake this way, but hey, we're going to go with it. And I had to add just a little bit of dead zone to the brake pedal because it was constantly, the potentiometer was constantly registering a slight bit of brake. So I needed to add a dead zone uh, in order to get rid of that. The same thing actually happened later on with my throttle pedal. It was constantly registering from the potentiometer that the throttle pedal was uh, the slightest bit on even though I didn't even have my foot on the pedal itself. So I needed to add just a couple of clicks of uh, throttle dead zone just to remove that as a possibility. But as I mentioned earlier, if your wheel and pedal set are in very good working order, you should not need to touch any of these options. Next, we'll move on to the sensitivity and we've got several things to look at here. The first two options deal with the steering wheel. Now the first option of steering range isn't something you should really have to mess with since we dealt with that on the previous screen when it asked us to set our degrees of rotation. So once you have that set, the steering range really isn't something you should have to mess with. But if you're looking at increasing the working range of the wheel, because of course 
when you're in these race cars, you're not going to be using the entire range. You're not going to use all 900 degrees in my particular case. So if you want to increase the working range, then simply move it to the right. If you want to decrease the range, simply move it to the left. But once again, really can't imagine a situation where you're going to need to mess with that at all. Same really goes for the steering sensitivity. Leaving it right in the center uh, is probably your best bet. However, if you do need to change this, it was probably because you're having some steering wheel issues like we talked about with the dead zones. Here, leaving it right in the center is going to give you a nice smooth response from the center line, meaning uh, when the wheel is straight up and down. Okay, No steering input whatsoever. It's going to give you a very smooth input uh, for the first few degrees of rotation from the center line as well as a smooth rotation uh, as you increase your rotation from you know 80 to 90 degrees and so forth. However, if you decide that you want to increase that sensitivity, then simply move it a little bit to the right. And then if you want to decrease that sensitivity a little bit, move it to the left. This is going to have the biggest effect on how the wheel responds in the center line. So when you have little to no steering input, again, not something you should normally have to deal with because we have part of our, our setup with all three of the cars is setting up the wheel lock and increasing that wheel lock can give you more sensitive steering. Decreasing the wheel lock can give you less sensitive steering. So again, the two uh, steering sensitivity items, steering range and steering sensitivity really aren't something you should have to spend a lot of time with. Now let's move on to the brake sensitivity. The brake and the throttle sensitivity are going to accomplish the same thing for their respective pedals. By moving these options over to the right, you are going to decrease the amount of, in this case, brake that you're going to have to use in order to reach full 100% braking power. However, if you want to increase the amount of brake you have to use in order to reach 100% brake, then simply move it to the left. Same thing happens for the throttle. Moving it to the right means that you're going to get to full throttle, 100% throttle quicker than if it's in the center. And of course, if you want to reduce this so that you can play around with the throttle a lot more in these cars before you get to full throttle, then simply reduce the sensitivity. So why would you use either of these? Well, by default, there's really no reason to, but again, uh, a couple of reasons might be, number one, if you're having issues, if your equipment doesn't work quite as well as it once did, or in the case of the throttle sensitivity, maybe you really want to work between zero and 100% throttle, and the game can get there pretty quick uh, when left alone. So maybe you wanna back down on this a little bit so that you can work that area between say maybe 30% and 75% throttle a lot easier without the game going from 50 to 100% throttle very quickly. So that's a reason why you might want to do that. Brake sensitivity, uh, for those of you like me who have the Logitech G920, you know that you have that rubber stopper in the brake, which can come in handy at certain times, but maybe it makes it too difficult for you to press the brake all the way down to the floor and get to that 100% number. By increasing this sensitivity, you can get to 100% quicker and maybe you won't have to apply quite so much force in order to get maximum braking power. So that's gonna take care of setting up your wheel and pedal set. Next time, we'll take care of setting up some options in the game, gameplay, driving, and so on. So that's gonna do it for today. Thank you so much for joining me and hope this helps you get started in Tony Stewart's All-Star Racing.